take a little sippy sip of the coffee. Get ready to jump into the news. The fantasy news must flow. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green. And there has never been and will never be another Daniel. And we immediately have some incredible fantasy news to jump straight into today. Unfortunately, it's fantasy news. I am afraid to show any visuals from because it has officially been removed and I assume these are people I don't want to make mad. And this is going to be that we got another teaser dropped for the upcoming Wheel of Time show on a German Amazon account. It showed a greater visual of Moraine in like greater clothing and a Trolloc figure in the background. Again, I can't show this here because I need this video to stay monetized and I don't want to piss off well, I've also, I've done a lot to piss off Amazon, but anyway, moving on. The fan reaction to this was mixed. Some people were concerned about the way Moraine looked. It actually did kind of look like she might be in sleepwear. Are my theories coming true? But generally, a lot of people were hyped for the shadow of the Trolloc in the background. Okay, fine. I'll show one still. Here's the still. Don't hurt me, please. This was released publicly. I'm just showing something that's publicly available. Don't hurt me. But for those of you who've been paying attention here on the channel, I finally got my Trolloc hoof. But we need to jump over from one major fantasy franchise to another, and that is that the actors behind Merry and Pippin for the Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson movies are coming together to create a podcast. Yay! Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd are specifically launching a podcast focusing on the hit franchise. It's called The Friendship Onion and expect it to premiere May 18th. <clears throat> Will I be listening to this podcast? Probably give it a shot. I don't know, I'm not much of a podcast guy to be honest, which I know being in my industry is a little ironic to say, but I just, I prefer a visual, I'm a visual learner. D damn it. But if you're a Gene Wolfe fan, I'm excited to say this next piece of news will probably make you rather happy. And that is that we have a tweet from a family member saying, Happy 90th birthday in heaven to my grandpa Gene Wolfe. Today, our family is thrilled to announce that a new collection of Gene Wolfe's short stories will be published by Tor Books. It may be grandpa's birthday, but you get the gift. I know some people are occasionally conflicted in how they feel about an author's work being released after death, but this seems to be coming straight from the family and I haven't really seen anything from the author saying he didn't want this stuff coming out. A lot of times authors just write so much they can't get it all put out in their lifetime and I hope this falls into that category. Regardless, I've seen the fans be positive so the Gene Wolfe fans enjoy some more short stories from the icon of fantasy. Why am I talking in this cadence? But before we go any further, a quick word from today's sponsor. Warning for shirtless Daniel. Welcome to another episode of Goblin Kwon Do, where you can come along and learn to be a Goblin Kwon Do master. How can you write a world where you are a master of Goblin Kwon Do? Easy. All you have to do is download the sponsor of today's video, Campfire. Campfire is the writing tool for anyone who wants to learn how to become a Goblin Kwon Do master. How does this relate, you may ask? We're figuring that out as we go. I have to think of where to go next. Let's say you want to write a world where you are a master of knives. Campfire makes that easier. Through their advanced writing features like the character organizer, timeline creator, and map, you can build a fully fleshed out fantasy world easily, keeping track of it to make your writing easier where goblins are masters of knives. Goblin grenade! Goblin strength! And with their advanced pricing model, you only pay for what you use, so you can be up to date with Campfire for just a few dollars a month. Or, if you don't want to have a monthly cost added to your bills because there's so many monthly costs, you can just pay for it all at once. Goblin distraction! So if Campfire interests you, follow the link in the description to sign up today. R slash fantasy has released their list of the top female fantasy authors based on the subreddits voting, and I was pretty happy with the results. Now, some people always get a bit annoyed when they see this, where they say, some of these people are just sci-fi, or they're up this high because of their sci-fi works. That's not fantasy. Genre means nothing. And I specifically love the top five of this list. I really encourage you to go check out the full thing in the description down below, but the top five here specifically were at number five, Catherine Addison, who I am looking forward to reading fairly soon. Number four, Ursula K. Le Guin, which if you know me, Yes. Number three, Martha Wells, specifically for her Murderbot Diaries. And that's just 
Yes! At number two, we have N.K. Jimson for Broken Earth, and number one, Robin Hobb for the Realm of the Elderly. And yes, within the next couple of weeks, I will be continuing on with this series. I need to know what happened to my boy Fitz. What's Fitz up to? Is, is, is she putting him more through more sh Probably. That's what Robin Hobb, she hurts Fitz. That's her full-time job. I put a chocolate in my coffee and it won't come out. And we had a rather exciting cover reveal that I'm a bit biased for because it was done by the same cover artist who has done my book, Breach of Peace, Felix Ortiz. And it's called Gifts of Pandora by Matt Larkin and it looks damn fine. Love the use of color there and I go I do cover reviews all the time. It's not just so I can mention that if you go to the links in the description you can check out my book too, Breach of Peace. I'm not just doing it because of that. <laughs> no seriously, this is actually a very nice looking cover and I'm excited for the author God damn. Okay, it's time for something we have not done here on Fantasy News for a minute, but it's time for Fantasy News Quickies, because these are a bunch of just trailers released on YouTube that I know a bunch you'll be interested in, but I don't have much to say about, so let's just go ahead and burst through. <laughs> First up, we had a trailer called 1899 from the creators behind the hit show Dark, which is one of my favorite shows of the year I watched it in, and oh my god, it's so good. This is gonna follow a mystery ship that is full of immigrants that disappeared, and it's gonna be them taking their own little spin on it. I enjoy that. Next up, we had a trailer for Sailor Moon Drop, and I know there's a lot of Sailor Moon fans out there. I've never particularly been in this franchise, but I watched the trailer, and that was a lot of... I'm sure it has its appeal, and it's just not necessarily my cup of tea, but I respect the fans. I hope you enjoy this upcoming movie. <laughs> Stranger Things Season 4 dropped its first teaser as well, and it's mainly just a bunch of children in a place doing a thing, and it's a teaser. It doesn't really set up too much or give you anything about the story, but I'm still kind of pumped to see Season 4 because, well, Stranger Things has not been as solid as Season 1 since Season 1. I still enjoy the show. And to my Boulder's Gate fans, it seems that we are getting Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance dropped on latest gen consoles. Neat! But all right, that's the end of the quickie news, and now we need to talk about something a bit more specific. I get to say a form of I told you so, that I knew these, I knew it. It appears that Doctor Strange was originally written to appear in the show WandaVision, something I touched on repeatedly in my discussions of the show. But it felt like Doctor Strange was going to be put in there and it felt a bit odd that he was not. Well, it's been confirmed by Feige himself that originally Doctor Strange was meant to make an appearance and the commercials were actually messages from the Doctor to Wanda. <sighs> So I get why they didn't have him in there. It's nice to have projects actually focus on one character, but I still would have liked to see Doctor Strange make an appearance. I don't agree with this argument that like having another MCU character show up completely steals the light from whoever the story's about. I think Doctor Strange's appearance in Thor Ragnarok is a great example of that, where he's just there and he's gone and it could have been that simple. And to me, I still would have absolutely seen the focus being that of Wanda. But you know what? It's okay. I get it. I still end up liking the show overall. I just wish Cumberbatch batch has still been in for like at least a minute and collectively making every single nerd across the globe simultaneously go <laughs> news disney has launched the latest generation lightsabers that will be available in their parks and they are actually fully extendable and retractable lightsabers that's right retractable too and you don't have to flick your wrist there is not too much known about how sturdy these are going to be how much you can actually bash them against other stuff i would assume not very but if you need Need this effect, you can officially do that now with a Disney purchased official lightsaber. Though in much cooler lightsaber news that's a bit old but worth note, there's actually a channel here on YouTube that pretty much made a working lightsaber? I'll have it linked down below as well if you'd like to see as close as we as humanity has gotten to making a working lightsaber. That man made, I would say arguably a lightsaber. Or at least a proto-saber. I'm nerdy, I know the terms. But in a big old bag of... We had our first trailer drop for Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and this was just eh looking. I actually really love Woody Harrelson and Tom Hardy as actors, but like, I don't know, for some reason this movie just does not have me hyped. I think it's just kind of the whole not knowing exactly where it sits in the MCU, what Sony's plans are for it. I'm just not attached to the character particularly, and Carnage is a good villain, and Woody Harrelson's someone I'd like to see him cast, but the writing strength I saw for the first movie did not give me faith we'd see the character done full justice here. 
in the sequel, and it won't be because of Woody Harrelson, in my opinion, it'll probably be because of the writing. The Red Band trailer also dropped for Love, Death, Robots Season 2. I reviewed the first season here on the channel, and it's absolutely worth your time. If you are a sci-fi fan at all, this collection of sci-fi shorts is an absolute delight, and I'm so thrilled for Season 2. I cannot wait for it. Season 1 is a must-watch for me for anyone who's a sci-fi fan, and Season 2 I'm ready. I'm ready. I am ready for that. My body is here for it. And finally, in leak news, a lot of people have been very excited for this upcoming Robert Pattinson-led Batman movie, and we got some leaked footage that shows some more stuff as him as Batman, but more importantly, our first real look at Catwoman moving around being performed by Zoe Kravitz. This is actually becoming one of my most anticipated projects. I don't know if it'll be great or not, but I just really want to see for some reason what this is going to turn out to be, because I can't entirely put my finger down on what it is. I know it's going to be highly influenced by the thriller 7, which is one of my favorite thrillers, so hopefully it lives up to that. That'd be neat. Anyway, this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. You can check out my book, Breach of Peace, in the links in the description down below. And if you'd like to contribute to the Discord going on, discourse going on here on Fantasy News, just join the Discord server and post new fantasy news stories you'd like to see covered there. Have a good one, y'all. Peace! And of course, I'd like to score a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, Hussein Hamed, William Kraft, and Nolan.